My name is Hannah, and this is my beauty budget. Hey, y'all. Welcome to stage two of the final reckoning. I've reckoned with a bunch of stuff from this sort of whole purgatory box, like everything that's still in purgatory. I'm trying to get through all of it. I've reckoned with a lot of it, but not all of it. So I'm going to make it through another handful of these products right now. I think that Joe is coming home from work, he said in about 20 to 30 minutes. So I might just reckon until he gets home and then stop, or I might just reckon until my spidey senses tell me that he's about to be home and then stop. In any case, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. Oh, this is just the box from a serum that I reckoned with in the last reckoning and decided that I'm going to give away. So that's great because I can pop that serum back into this box and give it away in, in its box. It's always nice to be able to do that. This is an unopened pore, pore professional pore primer from Benefit. I am not on the Benefit PR list. Oh, let's zoom in a little bit. I am not on the Benefit PR list, but I did receive a box of Benefit products in PR as part of a project. I think that they were trying to promote their new range of brow products. I'm pretty sure that that's gonna be it for me and Benefit. I don't think they're gonna keep sending stuff to me, but there are a number of Benefit products in this bag and this box that were all from that one PR box. So I've tried Porefessional before and I don't like it. It's too silicone-y for me. My skin is too dry for it and it ends up sort of pilling a little bit, and I also don't like that slightly darkened color of it. So I'm gonna give this nice, brand new, unopened, iconic primer to someone who's more likely to get along with it. I also recently got uh, a PR package from Urban Decay, and with Urban Decay, I, I do receive some PR from them. I don't receive everything that they release, and I, I see people getting stuff from them in PR all the time that I'm not getting, which is totally fine with me. They're doing kind of a cool thing where they reach out and ask about your shades and your shade preferences, so they don't have to send everybody the entire range of shades, for which I'm very grateful. I would not want to have the entire shade range of Stay Naked Foundation, for example, show up at my door. And I'm really glad that Urban Decay is coming up with strategies to prevent them from having to do that most of the time. So these are the products that they sent me. This is a powder foundation, and I'm really excited to, to try this, actually. You guys know that I don't really wear foundation, but Joe and I have been working to try to perfect what I use for my complexion in the photo shoots for our business. And I feel like powder foundation actually might be really great because it'll be more matte and it'll be kind of maybe more full coverage. I picked my shade, which is the lightest shade in the range, 10NN, so it's the lightest one and the most neutral one. It looks really light in the pan, but then when it's buffed out onto the skin, it looks like a perfect match. So I'm definitely gonna hang on to this one for now. Ordinarily, I would keep it in purgatory because I haven't tried it yet, but because I'm trying to clear the purgatory box, I'm gonna put it in my collection and start using it and see how it goes, and then I'll either declutter it or keep it. So this bit of the purg, these are quite new to me. I haven't used any of them yet, so Stuff like this in the purgatory box is kind of being rushed. Like it, this isn't usually what happens. Usually I would keep it in purgatory, but that's okay with me. I'm on a mission to clear the purgatory box before 2020. So I'm gonna hang on to this powder foundation. I think the concealer, I had this concealer already. It was given to me at the launch party for these products, just these two products. They gave me the concealer. I liked it. And I think I just felt like it was a little bit too full coverage for me and I already have beautiful concealers that I like. So it was fine. I just didn't fall so in love with it that it like dethroned all of my other concealers. And for that reason, I decided to give that one away. I think I gave it away to my sister. So I'll probably give this one away to one of my cousins. The foundation, same thing. I'm gonna hang on to it. I'm going to put it superficially into my collection so that I can test it out and see which one of these two works better for the photo shoot. So these are both going into my collection because of these extenuating circumstances of trying to clear the purgatory box, but I might go ahead and declutter one of them if I find that one works better than the other for photo shoots. What I can say is that I think that both of them are a good match for me, and, and I like that. I think that they really uh, have done something good by expanding the undertones 
for this range. It looks a little peachy on my skin. I'm not used to complexion products looking that peachy when they match me. I tend to go for something that's a little bit more yellow, but buffed out, it looks like it could work. So I will be reporting back about this. It won't be in a purgatory box video because that's really not gonna be the context for these guys going forward, but I'll definitely report back about them. I'm excited to get the chance to use them. And then this, the packaging of, of these is really beautiful. I really love this mirrored UD and I just really love, I really, really like this mirrored packaging. So this is a blush bronzer thingy. It's called the Stay Naked Threesome and it's in the shade Rise. I haven't gotten a chance to try this because these just came in the mail and it's very tempting to dig my little fingers right into it and to dig my little brushes right into it and put it all over my face. It's very, very tempting to do that. But I know myself, I know my face, and this is too bright for me, and this is a bit too dark for me, and even if this middle thing is the most beautiful shining highlighter in the entire universe, I still don't think it would be worth it for me to keep this. And so I am going to hold myself back mightily from trying this out because then I'll be able to give it away in this pristine condition, and I'm really excited to be able to do that. The packaging is stunning. It's stunning. That little Urban Decay on the clasp. This is a Mamond Calming Hydro Sleeping Mask. And I haven't even opened this, but the second ingredient is alcohol. So I'm gonna give this away. I think that Simbri gave this to me, by the way, that was its genesis. Here's one that I've been hang on, hanging on to for kind of a funny reason. This is the VDL Satin Veil Primer, and I received this at BeautyCon at the same time as I received the VDL Lumilayer Primer. The VDL people at the VDL booth gave them to me to test, and the VDL Lumilayer Primer is I mean, we all know there's no such thing as a holy grail, but it's my holy grail primer. I love it so much. I've used it up. I want it back so bad. I love, love, love that primer. And so I've kind of been keeping this one because I'm like, well, I love the other one so much, but it's just, it's just a really, really good straightforward silicone primer. It's perfect, but it's not the kind of primer that I love the most. I used to use this kind of primer a lot. And in those days, this would have been ideal for me, but it's so nice in this heavy glass bottle. It's totally full. And it's the kind of primer that I would like to encourage my young cousins to use because I feel like it's the kind of thing that makes a good protective layer between your skin and your skincare and your makeup. So I'm gonna give this to one of them. There's a bunch of stuff in this, um, in this bag right here that I'm not keeping. It was like a place for a while that I was putting things that I'm not keeping. So I'm gonna try to go through it all um, a bit fast. Although this is something that I am keeping. So this is the Precisely My Brow Pencil. This was in that box that came from Benefit. When I signed up, I think I got like a form in, in my email that was like, if you're interested in this, what's your shade? So similar to the Urban Decay package, they sent me a bunch of brow products and they were all in my correct shade, which is really, really great. And I think that if anyone were to assess externally, they wouldn't have picked this shade for me. It's 4.5, which is kind of like a dark, ashy brown. And that's the color that I like for my brows. But if you if you were to just look at me, you might not necessarily know that. So I was really grateful that I got the chance to select my shade and all of the colored brow products that they sent me are in that shade, which is making me enjoy using them much, much more. Precisely my brow is something that I was never interested in buying because it's too expensive and I think that the packaging is ridiculous. And so it's never been on my shopping list, even before my no buy year, this wasn't the kind of thing that I was buying and I would never buy it for myself but it's fantastic. It works beautifully and the spoolie is fantastic. The color is perfect for me. Everything about it is wonderful. It's the kind of thing that I'm really glad to have and I'm totally going to use it up. I just wouldn't buy it. But all of these things I decided at one time or another not to keep and I put them into this bag. It was kind of like a subset of the purgatory box. It was like a bag of things that I knew that I wasn't gonna keep. So I'll go through them pretty quickly. This is an IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Blush. I'm sure that it's really pretty, but it's just not my color. It's in the color Je Ne Sais Quoi, and it's, it's pink as a pig. It's pink as pink can be, and that is not my jam. I don't really like pinky pink makeup. I don't really like pig pink makeup. This is a Doucet palette. It's They have this sort of like system where you can 
select things and move things around and it's it's big and chunky and I'm very tempted to swatch that shiny blacky gray right there but as of this moment it is totally untouched so if I refrain from doing that which I can do because I'm a grown-up woman then I can give this away pristine and that's what I am going to do This one I couldn't refrain from swatching because it has all of these like gorgeous smoky gunmetal y grays in it and they are really really pretty and shimmery and lovely. It's just it just doesn't stand out enough among my collection of eyeshadows, among my collection of singles, my eyeshadow palettes. It just doesn't stand out enough. And as as nice as the new packaging is and as pretty as this is because I think it is really really pretty. I just know that it, it wouldn't get its due in the collection that I currently have. Here are a couple of foundations that Daisy sent me a while ago. Cover FX Power Play, if I remember correctly, this was too pink for me. And then this Becca Ultimate Coverage Complexion Creme was really thick, really thick, and I think quite dark for me. And then the Urban Decay shade 0.5 All Nighter was actually the one that was the best in terms of using it for the photo shoots. And I used it a couple times for the photo shoots, but it was still so matte and so full coverage and just not my jam. I'm hoping that one of these from Urban Decay will suit me better for my purposes. And all three of these I'm going to take home and see if any of my family wants them. And same with the Kevin Aquan Foundation Balm. It was fun to have around because it was so fun to like reach into and just use to like cover my whole face, but I would never wear it in real life. Like it, it was a useful tool for wearing on camera, but I would never wear it in real life and I just, I just don't want to keep it around because it ends up looking so kind of icky and flaky on my dry skin. This is a little shimmery eyeliner called Wonder Swipe. That is a Rimmel product. It's a dark shimmery blue. I just don't feel like I need it. I just don't want to add it in. And then this is a Zuzu Luxe mascara, which I've never really heard of. I have a number of mascaras in the kind of like backup box of things that I haven't opened yet, but that I definitely do want to try someday. I, I don't need to put this one in there too. Okay, my spidey senses are telling me that Joe is coming home soon, but I just want to reckon with maybe a couple more things that I am going to keep because I just showed you so many things that I'm not going to keep. So one of them is another one of those benefit products is the 24 hour brow setter. It's a bit crunchy. It dries really crunchy. I really like this weird spidery applicator. The applicator is kind of like an insect leg or something. The applicator gives me a lot of control over shaping my brows and when it dries down it really does set them all day which is why I'm keeping this. In general I prefer a waxier set, a soapier set to my brows but this is useful enough to me that it is going to be worth keeping. This is something that kind of surprised me actually. So this was in a set of three, a box of, of three, and there was a darker pink and then there was also, I think like a redder one. And they're by Doll 10, it's their liquid, shining liquid lipstick or high shine liquid lipstick. And I decided to give away the other two colors unopened. So I already have put them into giveaway bags for some of my friends and family for the holidays. And this color, I was like, I should try just one for my channel. So I kept this color, which is called Girl Next Door. And I didn't think I was gonna like it that much because I don't really like, like liquid lipsticks. I don't really like shiny liquefied lipsticks. I find them like a little bit goopy. But it ends up that it's a really beautiful thin application, very strong vanilla smell, which I kind of like. And it's a little bit of a slightly, I don't know, like slightly grungy, slight, just ever so slightly edgy pinky nude on me. And I wore it one day recently and I loved it. I loved the, the shiny finish and it was thin enough not to be out of control and not to be goopy. And I ended up being really impressed by the formula. So I'm totally gonna keep this Doll 10 liquefied lipstick or liquid high shine liquid lipstick. And I'm really glad to be able to report back that I think it's a nice product. But I am still gonna give away the other colors, the, the darker colors. This is definitely the one for me. Uh, this is really interesting. Let's talk about these two products. So two of you beautiful people, back when I was still receiving subscriber gifts in the mail, and I know why you sent them to me. It's because a long time ago during my no buy year, I talked about this really, really bitten, wind whipped winter cheek. And it was when I was either decluttering or deciding to keep an old Lorac blush called Plum Passion that had a beautiful sheen to it. And the description of that cheek that I gave in that video spawned so many recommendations. And three 
people sending me three different products that they thought would work well for that kind of cheek. And curiously, this is a good example of one of the reasons that it's a better choice for me not to receive subscriber gifts because I gave that description. I was very passionate about it. It was really exciting to have kind of like ignited this imagery in people's minds. And I totally appreciate that it made people want to send me products or want to recommend products to me. That kind of look that I was going for with that Lorac blush, that was back in my like early 20s. Like I was describing something that I was after then. I wasn't necessarily saying that I want to look like that all the time now. And in fact, my tastes have changed a little bit and I feel like blushes in these colors, even though they're really, really fresh and lovely, they tend to make kind of a girl out of me. Like they really, really make me look more red cheeked and cherry cheeked than I am naturally. And that worked really well for me in my 20s, but now I'm in my mid 30s. And it can sometimes make me look like I'm trying to look younger than I am or it can make my eyes look really old in comparison to my complexion or comparison to my cheeks. So it's no longer really a thing that I'm going for. And that's why I need to be free to make my own decisions about what I'm going to buy for myself, what I'm going to keep in PR. It's so much harder to not choose an aesthetic or to pass on a product when it was sent to me by a loving subscriber. So I feel like this is just a really interesting case study. It's just a really interesting example. There was a third blush, a Sephora gel cheek stain blush that one of you sent me last year that was this exact same color, sent for the exact same reason. And I just ended up not keeping it in my reckoning and I felt really bad about it because I totally understood where it was coming from. I totally get the vision and I totally get that in many ways the vision came from me. It's just, it's not a, a product, it's not a color that I'm really obsessed with anymore. So I'm not going to keep this Glossier Cloud paint in Storm. I'm going to give this away. And it's just for that reason. I have worn it a number of times actually recently just to test it out. And it looks great every time. And I wore it in a video and some of you guys were like, your cheeks look amazing. Like, it's not like it doesn't look good. It's just not what I want for myself exactly right now. So I'm going to go ahead and give that one away. However, this one, which I really thought I would also be giving away because of the color, it's the RMS Living Luminizer in Diabolique. And it's the same idea, same color, pretty much the same. Like you, you know, you same effect on the cheeks. And I've been wearing these two interchangeably in a lot of videos lately. And a lot of you have been asking like, what is that on your face? And I think I'm going to keep this one because it really does sheer out I love using a brush in it. And I think that that's why I'm going to keep it because I've been so into using a brush in a cream cheek product lately. And I just don't really have that many cream cheek products that I can dip a brush into. So cream cheek products in pots. And when I realized that this could fit that definition, I started reaching for it a lot and using it a lot. I've been getting so much joy out of using it because of the format that I think that it is worth keeping. And then I will at least have one product that will get me this kind of sheer sort of uh, sort of bitten plum cheek. And so if I ever decide I really want it, I can reach for this. But mixing this with like some cream highlighters or even some other blushes, it's been working out really well for me. So I'm surprising myself and deciding to keep this. I thought I wasn't going to be keeping either of these because they're essentially the same thing but in two different formats. But this one's going to stay. Okay, I feel like Joe is going to burst through the door at any moment. So it's time to end this phase of the final reckoning and that'll leave just enough things for one more reckoning and then I know that there are some things that are in my bathroom some like bath and body products that I also need to reckon with so I think that there will be one more installment after this maybe I'm wrong and there's weirdly going to be two more installments but there will be at least one more installment after this this was kind of a cool reckoning because so many of them are giveaways I don't think that there has ever been a reckoning with so many giveaways compared to the keeps so that's kind of fun so these are the six products that I'm going to be keeping for now we'll see how these complexion products fare in my collection and then these are all of the ones that I'm going to be putting into my giveaway box and many of them I'll be taking home to give to friends and family during the holidays. And that is it. Thank you so much for watching this, the second installment in my year end reckoning. I hope that you really enjoyed it. And I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself this week so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. <laughs>